Welcome to 60 Second Civics from the Center for Civic Education. I'm Mark Gage. Unlike the kinds of warrants most Americans are familiar with, general warrants do not describe in detail the places to be searched or the things or persons to be seized. They were unpopular in the American colonies, where they were used to search for evidence of smuggling. General warrants issued during the life of a king or queen remained in effect through the lifetime of that monarch and six months after the monarch's death. When King George II died in 1760, British authorities had to request new general warrants for the colonies. James Otis, who had once been an advocate general in vice-admiralty courts charged with prosecuting smugglers, represented Boston merchants in the effort to prevent the writs from being reissued. In a five-hour speech in February 1761, Otis argued that general writs violated the colonists' natural rights and that any act of parliament contrary to those rights was void. In a speech, he said, A man's house is his castle, and whilst he is quiet, he is as well guarded as a prince in his castle. This writ, if it should be declared legal, would totally annihilate this privilege. Custom house officers may enter our houses when they please. We are commanded to permit their entry. Their menial servants may enter, may break locks, bars, and everything in their way. And whether they break through malice or revenge, no man, no court, may inquire. Otis lost, and the writs were reissued. That's all for today's podcast. The show's theme song is Complacent by Cheryl B. Englehart. You can find Cheryl online at cbemusic.com. 60 Second Civics, where civic engagement only takes a minute.